Hello everyone! These hydroponic tomato plants started off their lives in soil. Normally I start my hydroponic plants from seeds without soil. I have used different methods and my favorite is using rock wool in water. But let's say you have a plant that started its life in soil, like these babies, and you want to convert it from soil to hydroponics. Can you transplant that seedling from soil into a hydroponic environment? And the answer is yes. If the plant generally does well in a hydroponic environment, you should be able to transfer it from soil. And in this video, I'll show you how I transplanted these beautiful tomato seedlings from soil to DWC hydroponic buckets out on my deck. I also have some growing indoors in my sunny sunroom, as you see here, nice and happy for now. By the way, this sunroom has been great for growing in the winter, but now that it's summer, it gets really, really hot in here. Even when I open the windows, when the sun is shining in, the temperature can get up to 90 degrees while it's still 70 outside. Here's one of the seedlings I transplanted from soil in this DWC bucket. Here you can see the seedling sitting in a cup of water waiting to be transplanted into the bucket and I'll show you in a minute how I did that but first some newbie advice. If you're new to gardening then start with sure winners like lettuce, basil and tomatoes. These do well in both soil and hydroponics so they should be good choices for beginners. Here's an experiment I did with an orchid that came from Trader Joe's in sphagnum moss. It's been living a hydroponic life now for more than a year, and I'd say it's pretty happy. So what's the best way to go about doing this? Well, you'll need the soil plants and you'll need a hydroponic system. And of course, it's best to make sure all the equipment is as clean as possible. Make sure there are no poisons or contaminants in your growing area. Now for the fun part. Here I have a nine pack of seedlings from Lowe's. These are the celebrity variety. First you need to remove the plant from its soil container as gently as possible and shake off as much soil as you can. Try to get the soil off the roots without damaging them too much. If you see the roots are damaged or diseased, then cut them off. Trimming the roots is not a problem, especially for tomato plants. They'll just grow some more and they'll be healthier. So don't be afraid to trim off anything that looks unhealthy. I let these tomato plants soak in some water for a bit, then swish them around to get as much soil off as possible. I changed out the water and did this again until I felt I got as much of the soil off as possible. Then I carefully placed them in net cups. I tried to thread some of the roots through the net cup so it would be able to reach down into the nutrient solution in the buckets. Don't worry if you damage some of the roots while you're doing this. Obviously you don't want to damage the roots purposely, but they will grow back bigger and healthier than ever. Next I put clay pebbles around the seedling to help support the plant. That's for the deep water culture system. I also transplanted some in coconut coir. Those don't need clay pebbles. The coconut coir supports the plants just like soil. The next step is to make sure you give the plants the right amount of nutrients and check the pH levels of your water. I like to use the master blend for tomatoes and grow big from Fox Farms for my lettuce and herbs. You will also need to provide plants with the right lighting when I grow indoors, I have LED grow lights. These DWC buckets are set up outside, so they have free light from the sun. And these are growing indoors in my sunny sunroom. But I supplement them with light from a Mars Hydro grow light. Viewer discretion is advised here. I'm having a problem with fungus gnats in the coconut coir. 
They most likely came from the soil plants, so I have these unsightly yellow strips around the plants to catch them. The tomato plant in the DWC container doesn't appear to have the same problem. It's the coconut coir that's attracting the gnats and giving them a cozy place to multiply. The last step in this process is to maintain and monitor the hydroponic system and the newly transplanted plants. Make sure to prune and train the plants if they need that. Actually, the last step will be the harvest, and hopefully it's a bountiful harvest. Thanks for watching. Bye.